spotted a nice bull, but we gotta go. heavy. Since the 70s, hunters have put over a hundred billion dollars into conservation through tax money, donations, Every piece of sporting equipment, gun and ammo that's sold, a small portion is taxed by the federal government that goes directly into conservation of wildlife and their habitat. All right, we are getting ready to go uh, hunting with my wife and with Natalie on an elk hunt in New Mexico. And I'm just kind of getting our, our gear laid out. Uh, came back from hunting with my boy and everything was kind of uh, put away loosely just kind of making sure we're all set We had the opportunity for this hunt because we already had it set up with my wife Jessica to go down to New Mexico So it seemed like a perfect fit to just bring Natalie along and actually have both women learn how to hunt together Natalie Eva Marie is a really cool person. She's very interesting Give it up for Natalie Eva Marie. Uh, She's a WWE star following her college soccer career. She's also a lead actress in a feature film and she's got her own fitness app where she helps guide people in their health and fitness journeys. And I know the biggest focus to Natalie about this hunt is having a better understanding of where her food comes from. I have never gone on a hunt before. Jonathan has never gone on a hunt before. And I was like, well, let's do this. I still have to be able to make coffee um, and food and just kind of making sure we're all set. Our med kits, binos, optics, all that good stuff, range finders. So um laying it all out and then i'm going to kind of pack it up nice so i know in my pack when i grab it we're good to go i'm, I'm trying to soak up everything yeah. and learn as much as i possibly can because there's a lot so i'm trying to retain everything even just from a, a rifle perspective like yeah. sighting in your gun at 200 yards even that you know takes time to learn and to understand yeah i i can't decide if i'm more nervous or excited but i'm going to choose the excited route because it's seems a little more positive. I like that. I like that. I'm seeing the, I'm, I'm seeing the daylight come up over there. I'm yeah, like, all right. We're all starting to sweat. Uh, we headed out in the field that first morning, and it's really interesting country in New Mexico, and it's a lot different from where I grew up hunting in, in Montana. It tends to be a lot more open. It tends to be a lot more like eastern Montana, frankly. Smaller scrub brush, smaller trees, very vast open country, ranch land, uh, amazing amount of acreage, and these animals can really spread out. And so the first day, our decision was to go up on a point and just glass and try and locate the elk. Oh, yeah. That's a good bull. Oh, yeah. Look in there real quick, right here. Well, we spotted a nice bull, so we're gonna try and make a stock on it. It's what, a little over a mile, mile and a half? I'm curious if you can go in. 1,900 yards, so we're gonna, we gotta kind of move fast though, because as the sun comes up, they're gonna wanna head for timber. They're out in the wide open right now. There's one nice little ridge short of them that should be a really good spot to use as cover to get to within, you know, a good shooting range. So we'll see, but we gotta go. I think in the moment, my first, like when we took off for our first attempt at one of the bulls, I was really impressed with everyone on this hunt's fitness level because, I mean, I, I consider myself pretty physically fit and, you know, I definitely was huffing and puffing like, damn, it's serious out here because when it's go time, it is go time. And as we come up over the rise, at any second, we feel like we're gonna see this bull. He's gotta be right here. We're looking and we're looking and we're moving super slow. And in fact, we had Jess remove her pack 
and we thought for sure we might have to set her up on a fence post to get a shot. And as we moved across this little, uh, little hill, he's gone. He's like vanished like ghost in the daylight. And even the guide himself, Gary, was just couldn't believe. We just could not understand where these elk went. And it was a really good lesson for Natalie and for Jessica that as big as these animals are, and as much as they tend to stick out, they can also vanish in a second. Absolutely schooled by this big bull. Got our asses kicked. Badly. That's why when we're like, we gotta go, it's like we gotta go. Because those things are, all, you see, they're always moving. <laughs> yeah, you were giving me a mean look though when I was telling you to hustle. Yeah, because I was just like, you were like, what? You're a fitness professional. You're both yeah. fitness professionals. Don't let the fat guys beat you. Gary, this is really crappy elk hunting. How come we don't have a dead elk yet? So when we took off, from the time we took off to chase her bull, mm -hmm. that was 46 minutes ago. We covered 1.30 miles, or 0.03 miles. So this is the Onyx maps right here, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I started our tracker from that point. Of where we were. Yep, mm -hmm. and see how it's a topo map? Mm -hmm. And then those elk just moved up into here. We saw where those elk went that morning and they were up in some timber and we decided to try and make a move on them in the timber. And again, in rifle season, it's hard because they're generally not bugling. He wanted to go around this way, but we're going to go around this ridge and get that wind where it's kind of blown away and then we're going to back that way. But those elk were on this ridge, but further down. So we're going to try and work it to where we get to this side and that wind's blowing. Because if we go there, it's going to go right across it. We got the wind in our favor, and we started moving through the timber, slowly looking for these elk. And it's why elk and deer are so successful at staying alive with all the predators that they have in the field. They lie still while everything else is moving. And sure enough, we're moving through the timber, and we blow these elk out. We walked right in on them. Did you, did you notice, like, I said to you, the wind's swollen. Mm -hmm. It was what, 10 seconds later, mm -hmm. we busted them, which we walked in on them, but that wind didn't do us any favors. So we had the wind going this way, and then all of a sudden you feel it on your neck. Mm -hmm. It's like game over, especially if you're in close to elk like that. You know, if your wind is not in your favor and they're like on that point, you might get away with it, but not when you're not nice. in the same patch of timber. At this point, we, we realize we're probably a little bit early. These elk are still bedded, and the best thing we can do is get to a vantage point and just do some more glassing. We kind of set up, and we just started looking over a vast amount of country, uh, searching those little pockets of brush and trees looking for the elk. Basically, everything that we can see from where we're glassing is all one piece of land owned by a single mother. So there's a single mom that ranches this entire thing and what's cool about what's cool about hunting here is that like the, the money that we're paying for access to private land is helping support you know like her ability to actually ranch and she was born and raised on this ranch so like generationally to keep to keep the ranch operating as a cattle ranch which there's not a lot of money in cattle ranching these days so in order for her to keep that ranch, the, the hunting dollars across the country, and frankly across the world, help finance and help landowners that have property like this in these times when cattle prices are low and it's like drought or it's tough. And we're on the edge of a small town where there's hardly any industry. So it's pretty cool that like the money that we're spending to be here goes directly to helping that lady like maintain her ranch and frankly keep it so after a couple hours of glassing it started getting towards evening and our wind really had kind of changed and it was moving in a direction that i just thought wasn't going to play well for us with the elk where we thought the elk were going to come out our wind was headed straight into that area and so I told Gary, I was gonna take Jess, and we're gonna go back about 100 yards over this little hill and look over a bunch of country that was actually behind us, but it was upwind. It took me about 30 seconds of glassing, and I spotted a bull, actually several bulls, up on a point 
again a little over a mile away. So again, we made a game plan like we did in the morning and we decided we're gonna go after these elk. This time, when we decided to go after these elk, I think Jessica and Natalie understood the urgency a little bit more. They understood that we really had to move and we had to get there quickly. I'm in the moment, I'm looking at him in the scope, and this is where I'm drawing from my time playing in college, being in the, on the field, being in those game time situation moments of, okay, we're in overtime, we're in a shootout, and all, all is on me. I have to score this goal. You can't think about the excitement. You have to laser focus, dial it in, and uh, in this case, make the shot. Oh yeah, that's the one I'm looking at. He's, he's laying there. He's laying there. There's one more like you hit him a little far back in the liver or something. Oh, man. Good job. Yeah. He just laid down. He's not feeling good. I mean, even talking about it is taxing. It's super heavy. That's why I think for me, I've like, I get why people fall in love with hunting because it's, it's a sacrifice, not only that you have to make physically to get out there to do what these guys and ladies do on a, you know, every season, but then, you know, I think every single person wants to make the kill immediate. Nobody wants to make an animal suffer. So to have the feeling of not knowing if mine was down or not because I got the shot off. It was a hit. Got to watch him walk a couple steps and then go down. And then really the the night was kind of against us because it got super, super dark and it just wasn't the correct play. I mean, what we're going to do now is just go home, let that animal have a little bit of time and come back in the morning and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sneak in on it and just try to see if he's still there and if he's expired then we're going to move in and take care of him so that's that's the goal that's, that's the, the goal plan. part of being a new hunter is learning from people who have experienced things in the field we've all experienced failure and some success explaining to natalie and to jessica that the best thing to do is to not move in but to actually move out is very difficult for a new hunter to understand and quite honestly a lot of hunters learn that lesson the hard way. Day two of hunting was all about recovering Natalie's bull. So we started the hike in that morning to go look for her bull. Backing up to the day before, what had happened is when Natalie shot, we had actually seen a, another bull with a couple other cows kind of run from the brush about a half a mile off to our left on a ridge. Well, sure enough, as we were hiking in to look for Natalie's bull, as we come over the point, there's another bunch of elk standing right there. And so at this point we decide, let's wait on Natalie's bull and let's check these elk out and see if there's another bull in this area that Jessica could possibly hunt. It's only 350 yards, which is exactly our target in the field. There was five or six cows uh, just grazing on this hillside. And we couldn't see the bull, but you could hear him bugling. And there's no sound that compares to an elk bugle. It's, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's majestic, it's epic, it's amazing. I was trying to sight in the cows with my scope just to kind of like get my target set and like know that I was, you know, prepping to be ready when he came over the hill. Here he comes. He's laying dirt broadside game. 
getting set and getting ready to pull the trigger and I distinctly remember my heart starting to like beat really hard in my chest. <laughs> Uh, and I remember being a little nervous about it and thinking, oh my God, I can't have this happen right now. Like I need to be super steady and like uh, make as good a shot as possible because that was another like big fear of mine was that I would take a bad shot. So it was really important to me that like I took a good shot. Um, but you also don't want to wait forever to take your shot because you need to be quick. So I was trying to move as quickly as possible and take a good shot. Nailed him. Get another shell in. Get another shell in your gun. Hustle. Yep. Push it forward. And I I think the the feeling I felt the most afterwards, Josh said that he had been hit. Because you can't see it in your scope because everything's a big blur when it all happens and you lose sight of him and Josh tells me that he's been hit and uh, he, I watch him as he moves up behind this tree and kind of up the, up the hill and behind this tree and um, Josh thought that he went down behind the tree and so I just felt relieved, <laughs> I think mostly, uh, that the whole moment was over because it's so intense and so heavy. Um, so just r really felt relief after it was all, after I took my shot. All right, so Jess made a great shot across the canyon here. Uh, we think we saw him go down just right over the edge. Uh, we're just gonna give him a break for a second. And uh, I think we're gonna head to Natalie's bowl right now, take care of her bowl. And then we'll work down this ridge from, from where Natalie's bowl is down the ridge and uh, to Jess's, get Jess's. So we got some work to do. how you feeling? Pumped. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah. Um, um, an experience I'll never forget, for sure. Yeah, amazing. Oh. You ready? Yeah. Alright. <laughs> Is my eye watering? Yeah. Okay. Let's go look for me. We're walking up the hill. I'm completely still filled with so many different emotions because ultimately I I'm, I'm hoping that I see the bull that I shot is right where uh, I saw him go down. And I don't know, I'm not sure. Gary and Josh point for me to look left, and I do, and I see my bull. He's there, he's there, he's there, Good job. he's there. Oh, I feel <laughs> extremely excited. I'm he, freaking he's, pumped. He's laying right where we left him. Yep. Good shot. Mm, I'm pumped. Awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Good thank job. you, thank you. There was a lot of therapy happening last night oh, when yeah. we weren't we weren't totally sure. We weren't to totally sure. It's the uh, ethical thing to do to just back out and then let him be. Yeah. Because otherwise he runs 500 yards that way and we might not find him. But. No, for sure, which makes a lot of sense. And also too, I think I have this misconception because sometimes you see it on whatever show you watch, especially hunting, is that it's like as soon as you shoot and it hits the animal instantly you think that it's just gonna go huh, and just like heal over and die but these guys are huge it's incredible i'm so happy i'm let's so go look at happy it. let's go look at this this is wild yeah that's, that's awesome i mean five by six i mean i feel absolutely amazing i think it's incredible not only <clears throat> that i was able to experience um like being calm in the pocket to take the shot uh, but also the fact that now I'm going to know exactly where my meat came from is something that uh, I think every single person should experience at least once because it makes you have a different appreciation for not only food, but um, what goes into that. And I think it'll also make a big difference in the sense of uh, appreciating each and every single bite and not wanting to waste any food. I will definitely be hunting again. I mean, shoot, this experience was, I can't thank Gary, I can't thank Josh, I can't thank Jess enough for even considering uh, extending the opportunity for me and my husband to come out here 
uh, and experience something like this with them. Uh, I'm truly grateful. I'll never forget it because I feel like anything in life, you always remember your first. Um, and for me, this is my first bowl. And not only am I so proud, uh, I'm honored and grateful. I soaked up every single second that I possibly could and I'm really thankful for that. So massive thanks to Josh, his wife, and of course, Montana Knife Company because um, they gave me an experience that I'll never forget. This is what hunters understand about the connection to their food. It doesn't come from a store. It doesn't come from just a, a, you know, a butcher block. You are actually part of the process. You were actually the one that harvested your animal. You packed it out, you dressed it out. You did everything to take care of that meat. And you understand that there's not a drop of that meat that you ever want to waste. And you understand the gravity and the power that's in that moment when you harvest that animal. After we had Natalie's meat all taken care of, it was time to turn our focus back to Jessica's bull. So we're walking the direction of where we think my bull is and we're still being super quiet. We're still uh, keeping our voices low, walking quietly. Uh, I really wanted him to be down. Uh, I wanted my one shot to have done the trick. And so we're moving slowly looking for him and uh, there he was in the, in the grass. Um, saw his antlers first. Um, and again, it was a tremendous amount of relief seeing your animal in the seeing your animal that you've taken um, that you've been successful is is a really special moment what are you feeling kind of just been like waiting for this moment like and i knew i was going to be like this so maybe that may is like also part of it i don't know it's just a big deal yeah. He was, he was beautiful. Um, it was so much even more special than I thought it was going to be. Um, but it was so special, so meaningful. The connection that I felt like I, I can't even explain it. It's really, um, it's really interesting to me. I, I, I can't quite put words to it but he was he was beautiful it was it was really really special I it's a moment I'll never forget overall this experience was amazing and it was very powerful and what I really hope that people get out of this is the fact that anybody can hunt anybody can be a hunter whether you're a lawyer in Denver, or you're a doctor in New York, or you're a fitness model, WWE star, or a mom running your kids to soccer practice. Anybody on Saturday morning can be a hunter. As long as you put the time into preparation, you put the time into getting the proper gear and the proper research to do it ethically. We can all hunt, and we can all have a connection to our food.